As we continue to read through Job's conversations with his friends who have come to comfort him, we see that his buddy Eliphaz has a much different perspective of Job than God did. In his final and most severe speech, Eliphaz accuses Job of wrongdoings, and he reflects the old Hebrew idea that the suffering always implies that the sufferer has sinned. In verse 5, Eliphaz says, Is not your wickedness great and your iniquity without end? For you have taken pledges from your brother for no reason. Strip the naked of their clothing. You have not given the weary water to drink, and you have withheld bread from the hungry. You have sent widows away empty, and the strength of the fatherless was crushed. Therefore, because of all these evil deeds, Eliphaz said, snares are all around you, and sudden fear troubles you, are darkness so that you cannot see, and an abundance of water covers you. Now, we didn't know Job's past, so couldn't know if these accusations were true if the Lord had not spoken of Job in chapter 1. See, Job was introduced in the first verse of chapter 1 as a man who was blameless and upright, one who feared God and shunned evil. God himself, in describing Job to Satan, had this to say in verse 8. There is no one like him on earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. And so even in this unrelenting trial, Job has the confidence to proclaim God's righteous judgments. In verse 6 of chapter 23, Job asked, Would he contend with me in his great power? No, but he would take note of me. There the upright could reason with him and I would be delivered forever from my judge. See, Job was upright and blameless. He knew there was no reason for God to crush him. And he was confident of this. God would take notice of him, and he would be vindicated before the Lord. Job knew God. He knew of the Lord's righteousness and justice. Job knew he had an advocate in the Almighty. He had a reverent fear of the Lord that the Bible declares is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm.